So today we're back in Seattle, Washington, and we're going to a thing called the Space Needle. So Space Needle used to be um, the second largest tower in the United States, but now it's changed. It's the second tallest tower in Seattle compared to a building called the Columbia Tower. So we're right outside. Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Adley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time. So we're right outside here. There's lots going on. So this is going in there. It's a very, very busy place as you can see all the tourist attractions and everything. Parking was six there, sorry, eighteen dollars American, so it's at twenty-three, maybe twenty-four dollars Canadian. If my conversion's even close. And that's what it looks like there, all the way up. Hopefully they give us some history on it as we get closer, but... Well, I'm glad you asked a couple of interesting things about the Space Needle. It actually sways in the wind. So it will stand a strong breeze blowing at 10 miles per hour, causing the Space Needle to sway one inch. The Space Needle was built to withstand the largest earthquake on record in 1962. So I'm not sure how to, that would work in today's standards, but I'm thinking it's probably pretty good. It's owned by the Wright family and was just refurbished in 2018 for a cost of a hundred million dollars. Holy cow. G-Wagon. So hopefully we can get in. We didn't do any reservations, but we do have the passes. So if you missed my other videos, we got this pass called the City Pass. I think there's five cities in the U.S. it works for. And basically it works for five attractions within the city, and it gives you a 45%, sorry, 48% discount on those attractions. If you want three attractions, five attractions, two attractions, it's definitely worth it. Definitely not sponsored 100%. It's just a good deal if anybody's looking for these passes. So all around the space, you know, like other cities, I guess, there's like buskers, street performers out there. And there's this old guy and you can hear that flute sounding thing. It was some instrument that he created. And it was actually really sad because the guy looked like he was in his 80s, but he was sitting there playing, asking for money and just incredible. I had to go up and see him and... Unfortunately, I didn't get any shots of them, but just incredible. So this is the entrance getting in. So luckily, the elevators up the top are constantly running, so you don't really need any reservations. We didn't know at the time, and my wife's just standing in the line. Unfortunately, she's going to find out that we need to go to a different line for the city passes, but... Actually, all throughout the week, using the city pass was really easy to do, and you save the money, so it's good. Hey guys, so we're just waiting to get on the. Apparently, they've got a special elevator. It's courtesy Blast Pass. We'll call VIP for wheelchair friendly, so ADA, which they call in the states. So this is pretty cool. Rather than going with the regular people around back, so this is going to go on a special elevator, and we'll go up. So I know what it's like. Sorry, what did you say? You can put that on your shirt. Yep. Thank you. Okay. 
Does this mean they're special? So, they got this special little badge here that means that I'm special, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, you're not so special. You just got a sticker. So, they're doing the security flags now. I gotta say, the whole process getting in the elevator and having the special elevator, even the security, they don't feel you out or tap you down or anything like that. They, they just take your word that you got no weapons. But the other, the girls obviously had to be wanted. And then they have a separate section actually cordoned off. So you got a separate elevator, which is really cool because, you know, people bumping in your wheelchair and smacking you around is probably not the best thing for disabled people. So we just got security checked. And then we got this special elevator operator to take us up. I don't know quite how this works. I've never done this, guys, but you and I will be the first ones. So I'm not sure if you watched my previous video that was shot today also of um, Illumina Field. Filmed the entire thing and broke the rules and it got caught. So my wife's like, every time you see cops coming by, oh, they're coming for you. They're coming for you. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Go, guys. There's going to be windows on the front side of the elevator. They said there's going to be windows on the front side of the elevator. I'll okay. Welcome in, everybody. Good afternoon. So this one will bring us all the way to the top here. So technically on paper, the Space Needle only has six floors, but it's because of spacing in between. So if you divide that in, an average floor being 10 to 20 feet, it's about 40 floors tall. The uh, north end that we see here on our way to the top, which just gets us right up to the top too. That's Queen Anne Hill, that's Lake Union. Here below us are all these unique buildings, which have some stuff on the roof so that you can see that we get up here. And this building itself is a unique shape. The Museum of Pop Culture is supposed to be Jimi Hendrix smash guitar, is the idea. Like a nice sailboat on Lake Union there today. And some of the mountains will be coming out. The left mountains are the Olympic Range. How many floors is it? A 52. 52. Yep, 52 on the top. So the Columbia is taller. Oh, they're way taller. About 73. Uh, at least 73, because I know the tip is like 90-something. Uh, oh. Probably at the highest you can go is like 70-something. But we look cooler. <laughs> Have a great time. Welcome to the top of the Space Needle. The whole thing, like it says in the name, is a needle. So the whole side of it's open in glass. So you can look over Seattle. And then if you look at those staircases, you can step down and go outside and step around. That's Lake Communion in front of us, guys. You guys can go off. So I was kind of frustrated. The girls went outside and got to walk around outside and I couldn't find a elevator to get me outside. But if you look up on your right side here in a second, you'll see the actual wheelchair elevator. And of course, I didn't find it out until somebody came up to me and actually told me.
So guys, I gotta give it to this place and also take it away. So, you have a special elevator as ADA, which I was showing on the previous clip. But then I get to the top of the needle and there's stairs everywhere to get outside. So, I do appreciate the, ex the special elevator, but... Those four stairs to get out are not cool. Because now I can't get outside. Okay, so I got to retract because they have a special machine to get you down to the lower floors. This girl just came up and told us, which I appreciate, but um, it looked like a big rigmarole and I didn't really want to kind of be in the circus, so I decided not to take it. So I got to correct what I said before. So it happened so quick, but we went down one floor via the elevator to this open floor, glass floor that you can see right through and actually was spinning around by a one horsepower motor. Pretty cool, pretty crazy what gears can do. This thing rotates around. There's Kenzie gonna lay in the ground. So this floor was actually opened in 2018 and it's the world's first spinning floor at 500 foot level. Pretty cool to see it as it just spins ever so slightly. Hey guys, this is way cooler than than the top floor. It's a glass floor and the whole floor is rotating. You can definitely see that tourism is very much alive and well at the Space Needle. This floor, they really capitalize on tourism and they serve drinks and alcoholic drinks and also just regular drinks. And then you can also have lunch as you spin around looking at Seattle. It's, it's a pretty cool opportunity. Like I said later in the video, I'm not sure if I would do it every time, but I'm glad I saw it. I think in this day and age with drones and all the technology we've got even online and it's it's kind of lost you know like back in the day this would have been like whoa cow but nowadays it's like you know we see this stuff on youtube drones uh, if you want to go on google earth like all those things so it's like i think we're kind of spoiled in today's technology but you really gotta marvel at the technology to do this and and it is beautiful to look out over the puget sound Apparently, this whole thing is rotating, but it's just a one horsepower motor, so it's all gear reducted. It's kind of cool because all this steel turning is. I'm sure, it's not light. There's tons and tons of staff taking pictures and everything else. So. Not good. You got definitely get to see a good view of Seattle.
That's the little motors that are turning this guys. So that was the view of the Seattle Space Needle. All in all, I, I would say the accessibility is pretty good. Getting up, um, you get these stickers, and then they basically give you a private elevator to get all the way up. Uh, coming down, it was kind of like sardines, as the camera will show. Um, I don't think I'd do it again. I think it's a one-time kind of thing, just a history thing, but all in all, I don't think it's it's worth it. <laughs> the second floor down with the glass was kind of cool, but other than that, I don't think I would do it again. So, it's up to you. The accessibility is pretty good, though. I would probably give it like a seven, maybe an eight, just coming down with the sardines and my wheelchair being smacked around. Wasn't a good feeling, but other than that, it was okay. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next one.